Now, as for red tide, FWC's latest map shows high concentrations near Pinellas and Sarasota counties and some lower concentrations around Manatee. This is a live look at Clearwater Beach this afternoon. Again, another gorgeous look here in Tampa Bay. We had a photojournalist out at Reddington Beach just this morning. She found a lot of sea foam, which mm -hmm. is what you're seeing right here. Is there a relation then to the sea foam and red tide? Yeah, there actually is. And, and while it looks kind of fun and bubbly, right. it's really a kind of yuck because I'll explain why. So uh, take a look at the graphic here and we'll show you what exactly the sea foam is, how it develops. And you can see right there that sea foam is it's dissolved salts, fats and dead algae. That's a that's a big highlight right there and pollutants in seawater. Now this develops when the, it gets agitated by wind and waves. Keep in mind, we've had a lot of wind blowing on shore especially the last couple of days, all of those storms. So it's really mixed up and agitated that water. Algal blooms are a common source. What's a big algal bloom for us? Red tide. So while it's usually not harmful, that sea foam, it can be uh, when red tide is present. So, you know, sneezing, headaches, cough, stuff like that could be a concern. So kind of stay away from the sea foam this weekend. Yeah, definitely something to keep in mind when you head to the beach.